What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is very much anticipated for a lot of you. I have been on the hunt for the last couple months really to find the most realistic feeling side stick that I possibly can for our home desktop computers without breaking the bank. I'm well aware there are several products that are ranging between a thousand up to three thousand dollars that you can get that are essentially the Airbus side stick uh, delivered to your front door so you can set it up to your computer. Now that is a little bit excessive in my opinion, unless of course you're doing a cockpit build. If you're like me and you just wanna have the most realistic feeling that you can get for a reasonable price, I think you're going to enjoy this video. I have finally found exactly what I am looking for. Now, before we get into the details of what exactly I found, we have to discuss a couple of things that are going to help you understand why I chose this product and why I think it is the best option available for a flying the Airbus. All right, so to really understand what I have been searching for, I've broken this down into three categories and I will explain each one in detail and why I choose one product over the the other as I go through the details. First and foremost, obviously the look of the stick, the dimensions of the stick, the feel of the stick itself, what the outer feeling, like how it actually feels to grip, and then the functionality of the stick. Now a lot of you guys, I understand maybe you have a one side stick or you're looking for one side stick and you need multiple buttons. Maybe you want some hat switches or multi-stage triggers. This is not really gonna be for you. I am purely looking for the purest, most identical thing to the real aircraft that I fly in the real world. That means that the side stick will only have two buttons on it. You will have a autopilot instinctive disconnect or takeover push button, and you will have a trigger which is used as a microphone push to talk. There are no hat switches on the real aircraft, and I don't want to have a hat switch on my setup at home. Now I understand that that's not for everybody, that's totally fine. This is just me looking for the purest, most accurate form to the real thing. So if you can't tell already, I have settled for the Flight Sim Projects A320 side stick. In my opinion, this side stick most accurately represents the tactile feel of the, of the grip with a very smooth finish, shiny finish, with the push button location for the autopilot takeover command. So the red button on the side stick is used to disconnect the autopilot or to take priority command of the side stick should you have a side stick fault on the other side of the cockpit. The location of this button and the button height is nearly identical. In fact, when I put my hand on this side stick, I cannot tell the difference between this side stick and the real world aircraft. It is that good. In fact, I would go to say that they probably have the exact dimensions of the real 320 side stick and they've recreated them here for you to purchase. Now, if you want to really split hairs, I noticed that there are some Airbuses, there are some side sticks, perhaps the newer ones that have a slightly different form or maybe a, a slight detenting around the takeover push button, which causes a slightly different feel. But in reality, you never feel that part is when you press that button, your thumb goes on top of the button, you disconnect it, and then your thumb typically rests either in the little divot on top of the side stick, or me personally, I like to rest my thumb between the takeover push button and the little flat panel that comes on top of the stick. And just like in the real aircraft, there tends to be a little groove or a detent exactly where I put my thumb in the real aircraft. And this is key because this really brings home the exact feel of what I am used to in the real airplane. Now, let's move around to the front of the trigger on the stick. The trigger on the 320 stick in the real aircraft is typically very light. In fact, there are some side sticks and some aircraft that the more they get used, the trigger feels so weak and flimsy that sometimes I almost have to push with my middle finger, push the trigger out to make sure I have stopped communicating and I'm no longer hot miking. That's not all the time, that just comes with wear and tear on these airplanes. But the trigger force that I feel here with the Flight Sim Project stick is almost identical to the majority of all Airbuses that I fly in 
real life. It's a relatively light spring. In fact, it's a very light spring, but it's just enough to where you have to actually move your finger to push it. And there's no real hard detent and there's no real hard click that you feel as you depress the trigger. That is true to real life as well. All right, so now that we know that the stick looks exactly like the real A320 side stick, it feels like the real A320 side stick just from the outside, and it functions just like the real A320 side stick, this is why I have chosen this particular one over several competitors. All right, so now we got the first aspect of the stick out of the way. How does it look, feel, and how does it function to the real thing? That is the first category, and in my opinion, nothing can come close to this side stick here from the Flight Sim Projects team. Now, the last two categories that we're going to discuss have to do with the base of the side stick. There are multiple different side sticks available on the market, all with different mounting compatibilities. So, to keep this video from running on super long, this next category is called under load. What does under load mean? That means when I apply a force to the side stick and I hold it there. Traditionally speaking, in day-to-day -day real operations, the only time the side stick will be under load for any duration is during the takeoff roll and rotation and during the flare phase of flight. Other than that, with a fly-by-wire airplane such as the Airbus, when you're making pitch and bank inputs, you typically roll it in with your command on the side stick and let the side stick return to neutral and hold that last input that you assigned the aircraft to fly. So to find that proper feeling of keeping the aircraft under load or keeping the side stick under load, I should say, the best maneuver to test is the steep turn maneuver. We do this in real world in the simulator and that's where you have to roll the aircraft past its fly-by-wire capabilities at 45 degrees angle of bank and maintain that bank with the side stick. So this maneuver is one where you are really stretching the side stick stick to its uh, axis in the roll and you're holding it there. So to, f to f properly simulate that, you have to have the right amount of tension fighting back against you on your base. And to me, in my personal opinion, the Warthog base from Thrustmaster is still unmatched when it comes to finding that perfect tension of keeping the side stick under load. Now, the Thrustmaster base is a traditional ball gimbal style with a large spring that pushes up against essentially a squash plate to keep tension on it, and it allows you to rotate this ball in a socket. This is not how the real side stick works in the Airbus. In fact, the real side stick has a system that is a little bit more similar, yet extremely more advanced and complex than the Verpal base, which is a gimbal style system. I believe Win Wing also has a gimbal style system. Now, I personally have a VKB base, so I have dealt with the uh, cams and springs and tensioners and uh, modifying detents. These bases are extremely precise, and I would say that they are actually superior to the traditional ball and gimbal style base that you find in the Warthog. You can have much more precise movement and it's much more easier to fine-tune to your liking. However, remember, this video for me and for you is what I feel is the most realistic to the real airplane. So whilst I understand there is better technology now for side stick bases such as a Verpal base or a VKB base, the old school traditional Warthog base with the ball joint and a single spring to me still feel more realistic than dealing with the springs and tensions in the Verpal base. Now, I will say that if you are a Verpal owner already and you already have a base, is it worth buying a Warthog base and the stick? In my opinion, unless you have the budget for it, I think you're going to be just as happy with your cam and spring setup in the Verpal base as long as you use the heaviest springs that are available to you. I was doing some messing around with my VKB base, which is a very similar design. I think they were kind of the original uh, company. I think it's a Russian company to come out with that gimbal, so gimbal design down there where you can adjust cams and springs. I actually have mine set up for helicopters. I have it very finely tuned and mounted to its own base now, so I didn't want to disassemble it again just to see how it would feel but I have used the win wing style gimbal and the the issue I had and it's a small issue is that when I use a very heavy spring with those 
types of bases, while they are more precise and easier to manipulate, the force required with the large heavy springs, it seems to me when I move the stick and I keep it under load, I can almost feel that I am fighting these little springs that are trying to pull me back to center. It is the smallest detail that I just, I don't think if you already have the Verpool base, that it's worth going to a Warthog base, but if you're looking to start from scratch, that the Warthog base is going to better replicate what it really feels like in the airplane. Because in the real side stick, when you move it and it's under load, you don't feel any spring at all pulling back on you. It's literally just a static tension. And that static tension is best simulated, in my opinion, from the Warthog base. But I don't want to deter you or say, oh, if you have a Verpool base or a V KB or whatever it is, that base is fantastic. Again, it is probably, I, I, not even probably, I, it is a superior design for fine control movements. But again, for simulating the real thing of the real Airbus, I can't get past the Warthog base. Out of the box default, it just seems to be the most realistic thing. Okay, so to finish it up here, this video, what is the last category? The last category is in motion. So we talked about under load, that's where we have a static load on the side stick. Now in motion means when you are physically moving that side stick in its range of motion. So whether you're traversing from a left bank all the way to a right bank and you're bringing that side stick in motion from left to right or you're rotating that stick, you're actually putting pressure on it and the stick is moving, that is the in motion category. And this one is nearly identical across all bases. I mean, I feel like you can fine tune a gimbal style base to mimic the in motion feeling that I get with the Warthog base. Just make sure that you don't have any really hard centering detents. The Warthog by default just has a firm, but it's a soft centering point, I'd like to call it more so than a detent. And if you can translate that with your Verpal style base, I think you're gonna be just fine. All right, we're going to finish up here with two real important aspects. That is mounting location and then the X-Plane default settings and then some accessory and miscellaneous items at the very end. One of the most critical points I want to emphasize to properly have the right feeling for flying the Airbus now that you're going to have a proper stick and a proper resistance and force to manipulate that stick, it is very important that you mount your stick or position your stick as close as as you can to the real thing. So in the real aircraft, the armrest is actually a very advanced. It has multiple adjusters to switch the both the uh, pitch or the tilt axis and its up and down vertical axis. So it's a highly adjustable manipulated uh, armrest and they designed it that way so that you can precisely put your arm exactly parallel with the base of the side stick. If you you don't want to have your arm sitting up too high and then having your wrist to go uh, wrist at a weird angle and you don't want it too low where you have to support your arm and your wrist. They want your arm, and by they I mean Airbus, it's designed so your arm is completely rested and the only thing that is free is your wrist. So to simulate that, the best idea that I came up with is a desktop mount. There are dozens of options out there. It probably doesn't matter which one you go with. I have a PEIN mount, a P-E-I-N mount here that I am using. And what I have done is I've mounted my stick to be exactly parallel or in line with the armrest on my chair. You want to make sure you have an armrest on your chair. If you don't have an armrest on your chair, it's going to be a little bit more uncomfortable. And you want it to be at the exact same height as your armrest. So when you set your arm on your armrest, it's nice and straight and it goes nice and straight to the side stick and you'll be able to manipulate your side stick with force. Now you'll probably notice if you mount it this way, grabbing the stick with your full hand is a little bit overpowering and that's true to the real airplane. In fact, I tend to fly with three or four fingers at a time. Sometimes I only make small fine adjustments with my fingers on the very bottom square of the base and I'm not even gripping the top of the side stick at all. So it is very important that you mount your side stick in the proper location, parallel with your arm, parallel to your leg, and it's at the right height so you have the right amount of force and flexibility to manipulate the flight controls. 
The last thing we're going to talk about here are the curves and sensitivities. If you go with a warthog base and you have this stick and you have a proper desktop or I'm sorry, you have a proper uh, mount for your side stick where it's in line with your arm, I recommend for the tollless aircraft that you turn off all your sensitivities and any of your curvatures. Now, I'm now for the flight factor, I still have to have a very slight linear curve in the pitch axis just because the pitch axis on the flight fly by or on the flight factor is a little bit unrealistic and a little over responsive. But as far as the tollless aircraft goes, zero curves and zero saturations on your settings. To finish up here, a couple accessory items. The uh, Flight Sim Projects team also offer a rubber gator, which matches the real Airbus. I didn't initially order this because I thought, hey, maybe I'd, I'm just gonna see what the stick is like. And when I got my stick, I was so blown away by how realistic it feels, I decided I'm gonna go all out and get the gator to complete the setup and complete the look. So they offer a rubber gator as well if you wanna go over the top to make it extra juicy. Now. To finish this, why am I picking the Flight Sim Projects over several other sticks without trying to go down a rabbit hole here? I know it's very popular, the TCA stick, in my opinion, it just does not emulate the real aircraft at all. In fact, I began to not enjoy flying Airbuses on my Flight Sim using the TCA Airbus stick because for me, knowing what the real thing feels like, it just wasn't going to satisfy what I want and what I'm looking to get out of my simulator. So it's not even a comparison. But I understand what Thrustmaster has done with the TCA stick. I think it's very good for an entry level simmer or someone who is only gonna have one stick and they wanna have some compatibility and some options with some additional switches and buttons. Totally get it, totally understand. And in that aspect, it's probably a good purchase for you. Now, there's another uh, competitor out there that has a very similar side stick and they mount it to their, their base as well. The problem I have with that side stick is there's some, there's some differences on the actual physical size of the stick. It doesn't feel exactly correct. There's some aesthetic things that don't look correct or that they aren't correct where they use silver screws on the front by the trigger. And then there's also, uh, they've made this detenting a little bit more exaggerated than normal, in my opinion, around the autopilot disconnect push button. The height of that autopilot disconnect push button, I mean, I've been flying this aircraft for a really long time and I, I, I know what my muscle memory is and I know what my hand can feel. And when I put my hand on the Flight Sim Project stick, it was exactly what I am used to in the real airplane. So huge shout out to Flight Sim Projects. They are, I don't know if they still do uh, order or they make it after it's been ordered, but typically once you place an order, it does take a little bit of time, a week or two weeks to actually get to the shipped status. Um, they do ship to the United States. Uh, I know I'm, I'm in the U.S. here, so they have that EU address, but I had no problems with the shipping. It came DHL. It actually came early, so I have no problems uh, with shipping with them. And if you're, in the, if you're in Europe or in that part of the world, it's probably going to be even easier and even faster for you to get uh, your items once they do ship. But again, no issues here in the U.S., and I live in a remote rural area of Texas. It came early on DHL. I was totally happy with it. I placed another order for the neck gator and the gentlemen over there the italians are just they're, they're awesome and i look forward to continuing to use this for a very very long time so that's going to wrap it up guys i know we got a little bit long here at the end i appreciate you appreciate flight sim projects shout out to you guys for sending me a, this stick and until next time guys i'm v1 stay safe stay healthy see ya